everyone. Remember this, this whole year, I'm going to be introducing you to so many people that I've been meeting. And I just want you to know all the resources and things out there for uh, you and your parents and anyone else who listens to this podcast. So today I have Celia Kibler with me. And she has a company called Pumped Up Parenting, where she's doing coaching, has a podcast, has books, all the things. I'm going to let her tell us about it because she knows it better uh, than anyone. But I just wanted you to be introduced to her and I'm just going to kind of let her go ahead and then we'll just have a conversation you get to listen in on. All right, Celia, how are you? Well, I am doing great. And Cynthia, thank you so much for having me. And you know, Cynthia is my mommy's name, so. Oh, name. that's right. And uh, so it's very awesome that your name's Cynthia. Mm-hmm. I uh, thank you for having me. A little about me. I am a mommy too, and I'm a mommy of five kids, two I gave birth to and three I gained through marriage. And I have been successfully parenting a blended family now for over 27 years. Mm. And I have been a real life parent for over 40 years. So for your teens and teen moms out there, I have raised five teenagers and they all live to talk about it. So good news there. (laughs) And they still like you. (laughs) Right. And they've actually made more of us. So Uh I'm a grandma to nine kids. Oh my. And so the cycle continues. They didn't like that. Go, oh no, no, we're not doing this. (laughs) Um, I'm the author of Raising Happy Toddlers, How to Build Great Parenting Mm. Skills and Stop Yelling at Your Kids Because I'm on a Mission to help a million parents stop yelling at their parent at their at their parents and the- <laughs> they, they shouldn't yell at their parents either but right. at their kids as well um it's very detrimental and you and I have talked about that yes before. yes so that's my favorite mission that you have like that really resonated with me because I hear and see it all the time and I'm so sad about it yes it's so detrimental and people think it's well everybody yells at their kids and sadly Everybody does yell at their Mm -hmm. kids and we need to really put systems in place and learn the strategies and techniques that we need to know. So we don't yell at our kids, because if Mm -hmm. you think about what's those little voices in your head, uh, the ones that say you're not good enough, the ones that make you second guess everything, the Mm -hmm. ones that make you feel like you're not worthy, the ones that make you beat yourself up guess Mm -hmm. how they got put there when you were a child and you were being yelled at. Yeah. And if you're yelling at your children, you're doing the same to them. You're giving those little, little voices in their heads that they're going to have to get over or live with Mm -hmm. when they get to be adults. Yep. Yeah. I can think about those things too, um, with my own parents and my parents were nice and regular. And I wouldn't say I have trauma from my childhood, but they definitely didn't know how to parent, but they weren't taught how to parent either. So, you know, that's uh, a difficult thing. Now we have all these resources uh, available to us to become better parents. And you mentioned earlier to me when we were talking that we always complain that there's no manual. Well, you have a manual. I did. I wrote a manual (laughs) because people always say there's no manual. So I felt the need to write one. Mm -hmm. And so raising happy toddlers is a manual. And Basically, there is solutions for just about everything that comes up with your parenting journey and and the challenges you go through with the other parent, as well as all the challenges, excuse me, that you go through with your kids. Mm -hmm. And you will find successful solutions. You can look it up like you're working on a car. You know, my children are lying. Uh, schools and daycare. What do I do about that? Having difficult conversations with my kids, building character. I have parents of teenagers that have this book and love it Mm -hmm. because it really relates to everyone. I mean, you may not need potty training. Hopefully your teenager is already potty trained, but if they're not, (laughs) guess what? Potty training is in here. Yeah. Or if you have kids of special with special challenges, Mm -hmm. you know, it's, it's all in here. And there is a successful solution, a doable, actionable solution Mm -hmm. that is not like, how do I even do this? Mm -hmm. You can actually take that strategy, that technique and implement it that day. Mm -hmm. Well, and And it will work. 
my audience is such a wide array of, there are some young people that listen. It is for young people, but I have some people that are actually young people who listen, but a lot of them are parents. But I think the reason I have so many parents is one, the stuff that I'm talking about with emotional regulation, which is what my podcast is about. Anybody, no matter how old you are, can use emotional regulation and it, it all works the same. And also I think I have parents who listen because they're like, Oh, this is how I can teach it to my child. Or this is how I can talk to them about this. Even if I'm not actually, you know, working with either of them, they can take those same things and use them. Exactly. And we are not born with emotional re regulation. Mm -mm. We are born with a whole lot of emotions. As <laughs> yeah. you can tell, if yes. you've spent any time with a toddler, mm -hmm. they go from happy to sad to you know, miserable to life is over to life is great to mm -hmm. like, it's like we're flipping switches mm -hmm. and in the same light, like toddlers that have tantrums, I bet, you know, 40 year olds mm -hmm. that still throw tantrums. Yes. They may involve words and language because they're older, mm -hmm. but it's still a tantrum. They're still mm -hmm. throwing a fit because they're disappointed something didn't go their way <clears throat> and they never learned as a child how to handle disappointment mm -hmm. and how to handle things that don't go your way. Cause welcome to life yeah. when things don't go your way. Mm -hmm. So if you don't know how to handle that, or you're setting up your child to be happy all the time, not that we don't want our kids happy, but you're doing them a disservice when they go into life and adulthood. Mm-hmm. Definitely. Well, what are all the different types of things that you offer in your pumped up parenting business? Well, um, obviously my books and I do have three children's books out as well, all about me. I am grateful and being different is fun. Mm -hmm. And uh, I offer group coaching, private coaching, and lots of courses that you can take if you just want a little course on communication. You can find it on the website and how can you build calm communication? Mm. Um, if you know you want a course on sleeping or screen time or gaming, the great thing is, is my son is a gaming expert and works in the industry. So he helps me with that gaming course and oh. tells you parents what you need to know about video games. Right. Cause and video games we, are fun and good too. Right. Not yes, all bad. They get mm -hmm. a bad rap. Mm -hmm. You know, I always tell parents with video games, like, you know, parents often ask me, how did Kyle go into this? Cause mm -hmm. he has a bachelor of science in video games. It's mm -hmm. called the bachelor of science of um, simulation and digital entertainment. Oh yeah. I Many believe, kids want I have that all degree. The words right. <laughs> and, um, how did that happen? Well, one of the big ways it happened is that I didn't put him down for mm -hmm. playing video games. Mm -hmm. He and he is, let me give you his age. He is 34 years old. Mm -hmm. So back when he was a young child, 30 years ago, he loved video games. He mm -hmm. always loved video games. Mm -hmm. And I didn't ever like say, oh, what are you playing those for again? Well, you know, you're wasting your time mm -hmm. because he also had a schedule. Mm -hmm. He had video game time, but he also had responsibilities, chores. He had homework. He had outdoor play. He mm -hmm. had school. He had meals. All of that. It was not get him from school and sit on a video game till you go to bed. Right. I mean, he probably would have liked that. Right. But, you know. Mm -hmm. And so because I sat with him when he played a video game and I asked him, why do you like this? And I asked him to teach me, although he was never too keen on me playing with him because I'm not so great <laughs> at it. Yeah. But, you know, he tolerated me, mm -hmm. you know, and it's things like that, getting involved with your child, looking at what your child's passion is, mm -hmm. discovering what they love, not what you think they should love. Mm-hmm. You know, actually seeing what is their passion and you can do that at all ages. And it's great to start when your kids are little, but if you didn't, it's never too late. I always say nothing is too late unless you're dead. If you're yeah. dead, too late. <laughs> Maybe not. Maybe people will argue that up with me, but I think overall, <laughs> if you're gone, too mm -hmm. late, Yeah. but nothing is too late yeah. to, you know, create that connection with your child. I love that. 
That's so good. And what would you say, like your target audience, is it mostly parents or do you just have everything that you coach and work with? So I call myself a family and relationship empowerment coach. And Mm. the reason I say that is because a, a cooperative, calm, happy, fun family is so much more than just parenting. Mm -hmm. Parenting is a huge part of it. And the majority of my clients are parents, but I also will talk to their children, Mm -hmm. you know, depending on if that's what they want. Mm -hmm. They are also relationships. There are also marriages or girlfriend, boyfriend that want to, you know, um, you know, fix their relationship and make it stronger. Mm -hmm. They're also that. Uh, But overall, I'm a nutritionist. I, um, I, I work with them about food and healthy eating. I'm an expert in children's fitness because Mm -hmm. I have a fitness company called fun fit that I started back in 1987. So it's, it's all about being healthy as Mm -hmm. a family inside and out through your methods, through your integrity, through what you do and how you behave because you're their strongest role model. Yeah. Nobody is more impacted than impactive. Is that a word? Impactful mm-hmm. than like impacted teeth. Impactful <laughs> than you. Yeah. And whatever you do, good or not so good, you give your children permission to do. So mm-hmm. if you don't want them to do it, don't do it. Yeah. Right. And it sounds so holistic. So it's all the different parts of us that you kind of touch on and all of those areas. And that, that is exactly what families need. I can see that so much. Um, and because you have a blended family background, I can see when you were talking about like the relationships of the parents, um, it's, it's different when you're a blended family versus two bio parents of those children. And even though I didn't, I'm from a blended family. And even though I didn't want there to be a difference, there is a difference. And now, and now blended grandparenting, you know, even though we love those kids the same, there is, you know, there's like these little jealousies or these little things that come up that you're like, wait a minute, you know, we're, we know what we're doing. We, you know, have this understanding or love for all these kids, but there's still, there's just some kind of a pull or difference when it's, you know, this is a child I birthed and their child versus this is a child I love, but I don't have the same history with them. And it's just, right. And and I get asked that question often. Mm -hmm. People will say, because I have nine grandchildren and two of them, only two of them are of my gene Mm -hmm. family. Yeah. (laughs) So my daughter has two children. Mm-hmm. My son, the gamer, and his wife, who is also in the gaming industry, have cats. Yeah. Why? They're busy gaming. You're right. So they don't have kids. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. But my three sons, my three stepsons, they all have children. Mm-hmm. So they have the other six, seven. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I can't count. Mm-hmm. Math is never my strong <laughs> point. But anyway, so they have the rest of them. And I always get asked the question, do you love your daughter's children more? Mm-hmm. And the answer to that is absolutely not. Mm-hmm. Because my first grandchild, who named me Gammon, that's my name, oh. is Logan, who mm-hmm. is the child of my middle stepson. Mm-hmm. And he would we care we care for our kids a lot our grandkids Mm -hmm. I they're him and Mason and you know my other grandkids I love them as dearly as I love Harper and Brooks what is great about Harper and Brooks is you get to see family resemblance yes you know you get to like look at Brooks and see how you know he looks like you know my mom or dad, like Harper, sometimes will mm-hmm. in their baby pictures look just like my mom, things like that. So you get to see that. Mm-hmm. But the love for them and people don't, they're like, oh, well, you don't, re- you know, they're not really your kids. Yes, they mm-hmm. really are. And mm-hmm. I guarantee you, if you told, if you said to Logan and Mason that I'm not their grandmother, oh, yeah, 
they first of all they'd be highly confused mm-hmm. secondly they would deny it totally yeah, they'd right. be like of course she is right i mean the smile on their face when i talk to them and the smile on my i mean i you know yeah it's 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 not blood but it doesn't have to be family right. doesn't right. have to be blood right i love that and i I've experienced that so much too. And so those having those experiences in our own lives helps us to work with these families and kids that are experiencing a lot of these same things. And I love, I love that. Um, well, you mentioned to me earlier, and I'm going to put this in my show notes, but that you have a gift that you're going to give the parents. And I, I don't, you'll have to tell about it if the teens would get the same amount of stuff out of it that a parent would, but it's called the patient's playbook. So tell me about that a little bit. And if a teen were to sign up for it, for whatever reason, what would, you know, would it be the same thing that they could get out of it? So it actually is the same because when I talk to parents and and I talk to anybody and I say to them, what is something you would like more of? Patience is so high up mm. on the answer scale. Mm-hmm. So many people say patience, patience, yeah. patience. So I created um, a sheet that has 15 ways that you can increase your patience. Mm, because people it. are like, how can I get more? Pa-? I just don't have enough patience. You hear it all the time. Mm-hmm. Oh, if I only have patience. You know, even kids, like, Mm -hmm. I don't have the patience for that. I can't read a book. I have no patience. (laughs) I can't do this. I have no patience. You know, nobody has patience. Yeah. And so I have that. I also on my website have a free eating well um, freebie. So, you you know, if you want to learn how to eat a little better. Yeah. Girls, boys, Mm -hmm. grownups, children, Mm -hmm. teens, parents, Everybody. everybody. It's on there. So if you go to pumpedupparenting.com, pumpedupparenting.com, you can find both of those um, uh, PDFs that you can opt in and get. One is, you know, one is on food and one is on patience. Okay. So. And you also have an international day of calm coming up. Tell us about that. Oh, I do. It? So in my journey to stop parents from yelling at their children, I one day decided back in 2021 that I should just calm the whole world. It was <laughs> when, and there's still a lot of it that, you know, everybody's so busy judging and criticizing mm-hmm. and ridiculing people just because they think different from them. They mm-hmm. have a different opinion. Or now with social media, you can be friends for 20 years and you have a difference of opinion. You're blocked. Like yeah. you're scratched <laughs> from the life. So now you're gone. <laughs> and I just said, this, this is just ridiculous. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, that politics will do this. Politics, let me tell you, from the time politics began, Mm-hmm. Half the world went for one guy and half the world went for the other. Right. It's how it is. And, mm-hmm. you know, you just agree to disagree. Yeah. You don't like hate the other because mm-hmm. no matter what point of view we have as humans, if you spend time talking to the other person and learning about them and learning about their beliefs and their values and learning about why they think a certain way you will find much more in common Mm -hmm. than different. Yes. Part of what my children's book, Being Different is Fun, is based on is learning about each other. Mm -hmm. And so I really decided we needed a day of calm. Yeah. And um, so I I made one. (laughs) And it's on April 5th of every year. That is the year my dad passed away in Mm. 2020. And I chose that day to honor him because he was the yeller in our family. Mm. And here's a man who did so much for humanity, so much, so many great things. One thing he did is help put seatbelts into automobiles. Wow. That, and he always felt mediocre. He always Mm. felt like anyone could have done it. I've never done anything special. And that is because he was mentally and physically abused as a child. Yeah. And that's what it does. It makes, Mm -hmm. it doesn't make children grow up to hate you. 
It makes them grow up to hate themselves. Yes. And so in this day, we have, we'll have a summit. We have one this year. It'll be April 5th, 6th, and 7th. And there will be speakers about all different walks of life and different aspects of life, um, international speakers as well, that really touch on all the things that we stress about. Because if we are financially stressed out, mm. we are not calm. Mm -hmm. If we have rough personal relationships, we are not calm. Calm mm -hmm. is not just sitting on a mountain and looking mm -hmm. out at the beautiful meditation, horizon. yeah, meditation and mm -hmm. yoga and all that. That is calming. Mm -hmm. But to be calm, completely calm, we must calm and regulate the areas of our life. Yes. I had someone say to me um, that, you know, I'm too excited. To, I'm too wild and excited and fun. I, yeah, I could never be calm. Well, I am too. Mm -hmm. But that's part of being calm is being happy and yeah. having fun and mm -hmm. having energy. Mm -hmm. That doesn't mean you're not a calm person. Right. Probably means you're a lot happier than some other people who even are just sitting and meditating. So, mm -hmm. you know, it's it's the whole picture. And this year, we're proud to do our Rescue a School project. And we are rescuing a school in Uganda that that educates about 400 students in West Uganda, where they are extremely poor and their school is made of leftover wood, which is mostly termite damaged oh. and falling apart and mud on the ground. There, there are no shoes. So there are jiggers. That is a huge insect problem and come in through feet. Oh, and my. so because these kids are on the mud mm -hmm. and some do not have shoes. Right. That's a problem. They don't have food. Some are orphaned from AIDS because AIDS is huge. Mm -hmm. It's just a wonderful school. And I teach there virtually. And in one of my teachings, I found out that the kids didn't even have toothbrushes because I was telling them how to brush their teeth. It's mm -hmm. a hygiene talk. And so one little boy raised his hand and said, how do you brush your teeth if you don't have a toothbrush? <gasps> Not oh even gosh. a toothbrush. Mm. And so I ship them a whole bunch of toothbrushes, but <laughs> we're working this year to rebuild this school oh, and wow. your help. Any of you listeners that would really like to help these kids mm -hmm. go on to dayofcom.org, dayofcom.org. You'll see the rescue a school project. You'll learn all about it in March. We're going to come out with um, all these ways that you can support them. Like you could just send money for a pair of shoes and, you know, a dollar, $5. It, mm -hmm. it doesn't matter mm -hmm. the amount mm -hmm. because every amount's going to go and help these kids continue their education mm -hmm. and be at this school. And we're hoping to build a dormitory too for the kids that are orphaned and don't have anywhere to sleep. Yeah. So oh my gosh. It's, it's a really wonderful project. That's wonderful. You are just involved in so many things and I'm inspired by talking to you because I'm like, oh, what are Thank all you. the things that I can do in this world? And I, <laughs> I, I think about that stuff all the time anyway, but this has just helped me to even think about more things I can be involved in. So I'm going to put so many things in my show notes so that everyone can click on stuff, find you, look at all the things that you're doing, buy your books. Um, I'm just so excited to to have met you and know what you're doing in this world. And it also is inspiring because sometimes as entrepreneurs, we kind of almost feel alone sometimes when we're trying to work on this thing and we're doing it on our own and we don't know what other people are doing or that other people have the same goals and missions in life. And so I'm glad to, to know about that. So Thank you. For I'm glad we us. met too. And Cynthia is going to be on my podcast too. That's right. So, so you I get know. to hear from her side too, <laughs> but um, yes, I'm so glad we met. And, and that's, what's wonderful about the world is mm -hmm. that when you put yourself out there to meet people, you meet wonderful people. Yes. And that you stop judging and stop having this limited view of, well, not sure about this person, not mm -hmm. sure about this one, this one, I don't know about that. Mm -hmm. And just get to know people. Yeah. Y your world is so much better and oh, yeah. so much brighter. 
I think so too. And so that's, I'm, I'm so excited to meet as many people as I have so far and more to come for the rest of the year. So thank you so much for joining us. And we will be checking on all the things that you're doing. And I definitely want to check out this day of calm because I need that. <laughs> Good. Well, we'd love to have you involved in it and yeah. anyone else. There's a lot of projects on there, things you can do with your kids mm. on that website. So a whole come and that can be your contribution. Just do something special with your kids on that day. Yes. Well, and, and I then let us know what you did. With my grandkids, I definitely, this, these books are going to be good for, for my kids, for my grandkids. And I'm going to definitely be giving them a copy of that. So, well, thank you for having me. Sure. Jesse, I really appreciate it. You're so welcome.